You have to press got it as well. Slide, slide this thing. So let me get my slides out. Okay. Well, we're already live. So get your slides up and I'll introduce you. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Dr. Akil Teher, and he's going to be talking about a very important subject, erectile dysfunction. Do you want a blue pill or do you want a blueberry? The choice is yours. He's also a contributor to the new, brand new, epic Ultimate Vegan Health and Weight Loss Bundle, and he'll tell you all about his contribution. You can get the bundle from him just by clicking the link below this video and in the chat. Please welcome him to the show. Hi, Doc. How are you? Or should we say uncle? <laughs> I'm doing very, very well, uh, Chef AJ. And I want to let your viewers know that my book has come out, the audio book, the audible audio book has come out. And this is because your viewers wanted me to have an audiobook in my own voice. Absolutely. I'm so happy. that I'm, I'll, I'll put the link to that in the show notes now that it's, it's in there. Fantastic. And it, they can try the Audible sample for about two or three minutes. If they like it, they can buy it so that it all goes to charity. That is fantastic. Thank you. Hey, you know, your slides are not in the proper uh, way to see them. We're seeing the, the thing. Can you put it in slideshow mode? You know what I'm saying? I will. Oh, you thank you. Absolutely right. Perfect. This, perfect. Let's see. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Yes, that is perfect now, Doc. Thank you. Okay. Let me start. Now, first of all, look at this picture. We all know about the uh, Pill, the blue pill, the Viagra that came out way back in the late 90s, no, early 90s, it came out for problems of erection and or what they call as impotence. Now, to me, this is a heart month. February is a heart month. Why am I talking about erectile dysfunction? The reason being there is a close connection between heart disease and erectile dysfunction. The connection is this, that if you have heart disease, coronary artery disease being the most common, more than likely you are going to have erectile dysfunction. And if you have a primary symptom of erection problem, it will be a warning sign that there is impending heart disease lurking in the wings. So that is the most important reason why I chose this subject today. Now, if you look at the right side, here are the blueberries. The blueberries and the other fruits and vegetables are the ones that can do the same work as the blue pills without without any side effects or complications or warning signs. And we'll come to that as I go through the slides. So I'll go to the next slide. Sorry, I went here. What is erectile dysfunction? See, many people realize that, okay, arousal, no. This is purely Erectile dysfunction is an inability to get an erection hard enough or to maintain an erection long enough for sex. Now, from time and time to time, people, all people have this problem. But when it becomes an ongoing problem, that is the time you've got to think that is it something to do with my health? It is something to do with something that I have, cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes heart disease, that is the warning sign. The next slide is who gets erectile dysfunction? 30 million men in America suffer from ED and 300 million globally. This, folks, is an underestimated number. It is a conservative number. The reason being that men do not like to talk about erection problems. That is why you see so many sites online that are selling drugs 
that may impair your health, that may ha be harmful to your health. So think about it. There is an advertisement on, uh, online. From your couch, you can buy the blue pill or the erectogenic drugs. For God's sake, if you are on your couch, you're bound to get ED. Go out and exercise. So that's another problem. And the thing is that we do not understand, but men do not like to talk. Even when I gave talks on erectile dysfunction in the 1990s, it was, it was women who asked me more questions than men. So let's go to the next slide. The mechanics of erectile dysfunction. See, a lot of people should understand this. This is your flaccid penis. This is an erect penis. You have two chambers in your penis, the cavernous, corpora cavernosa. Now, the moment you get blood gushing in over here, this causes your penis to expand and stiffen. So this is when you get an erection. Now, it all starts with the impulses from the brain and genital nerves that start this process. So anything that blocks these impulses or risk, that is pretty uncommon. But the common thing is restriction of blood flow in the penile arteries that can cause erectile dysfunction. So the penile arteries are very important. And this is where you come across all this heart disease and cholesterol and diabetes and high blood pressure that can cause problems of atherosclerosis and narrowing of the penile arteries, which are definitely very small arteries. So this is the mechanics of erectile dysfunction. So now you come across the chronic causes. We always said heart disease, clogged blood vessels, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, the metabolic syndrome, which combines all this plus high insulin in your body and visceral fat, abdominal fat, and then finally the Peyronie's disease, which is a scar formation in your penis. We do not know the cause, but can give you curved, painful erection. In my practice, the most common things that I noticed in my patient was smoking and high blood pressure. Now, so we take into consideration all this and then we go lifestyle causes. Smoking is the main cause of this particular thing, which I said with high blood pressure. Alcoholism. Everybody has heard that saying, what is it? Uh, it increases the desire, but decreases the performance. Uh, that is excessive alcohol can do that. Drug abuse. If you take even your pain medications or whatever, if you abuse it, you know, start using it longer than it's supposed to be or start using it as a recreational thing, you're bound to get erectile dysfunction, lack of exercise, because exercise improves the oxygenated blood in all the blood vessels, 50,000 miles of arteries that runs in your body, it produces, it gives oxygenated blood. Causes of surgery. Surgery can damage the nerves and blood vessels near the penis. Now, most of the surgery is done in the prostate cancer in man, the bladder cancer, surgery for enlarged prostate. But because we have robotic surgery now, I don't think that this becomes a major problem. But let me tell you a little story that I have. When I was working about 15, 20 years back, a patient of mine walked in. I still remember his age, 39 years old, and he was having prostate cancer. And the surgeon who did the surgery was a fine surgeon, 
We did not have robotics at that time or it was just new. And so I did not see him after about a year and a half, he came back to see me. It tears in eyes. And he told me that doc, if I had known that I would have lost completely my sexual function, I would have faced cancer rather than, rather than have this. These are his words. So we should be careful in whatever we do as far as doctors, surgeons, then now since you have robotic, these are things which happen. Prostate cancer again, we go back to that, the dairy thing, the milk, the estrogen has been proven that it can cause prostate cancer. Medications, I mean, can you imagine the American public is in so many medications, at least two or three medications. Now, if you have certain blood pressure medications like beta block, or thiazides or antidepressants, your SSRIs, you can get. The reason I'm talking about this is before you embark on any treatment, ask your doctors, is my medication causing me this problem? Be proactive in your, uh, you know, in your listening treatments. Even over-the-counter medications can have a problem your antihistaminics and all that uh, can cause erectile dysfunction. Psychological, it's so important that we realize this. See, stress is the first thing. I want to make people understand this. Stress means it is an acute stress or is a chronic stress. In acute stress or chronic stress, what happens is your autonomic nervous system starts overplay. That the sympathetic uh, system, sympathetic nervous system goes into an overdrive. I like to call it uh, pushing the gas pedal. So if you are in front of a car and you are trying to avoid an accident, then immediately your or the sympathetic nervous system increases your blood pressure, your heart rate goes high, your uh, breathing is heavy. But once that danger is over, your parasympathetic takes over and now you're relaxed. Your blood pressure comes back to normal. Your heart rate comes back to normal. This is okay. This is a fight, fight and flight response. But what happens if this over, overdrive of the sympathetic nervous system continues the way it does? Then you get chronic stress, which increases your cortisone levels, and then leads to depression, your low self-esteem, and then comes a performance anxiety. One caveat over here, if you are having erectile dysfunction and you are getting morning erections, which people do, morning erections, because it is a non-rapid eye movement sleep, whereby everything is relaxed, and so you get morning erection. If you get morning erections, that means it is not a physical cause. It is a psychological cause. So this is a very important thing to remember. Then, then you have to do the psychotherapy and go and talk to people, or talk to your partner, talk to your spouse. That is different. But a physical problem is most likely if this is not the case, apart from all the surgery and other things, this becomes your lifestyle, bad lifestyle becomes a very important cause. Oh, okay, now we come across this because I too am an avid cyclist. So, so what happens is some, I know a lot of people who go on and love biking, and that is great. But pressure on the perineum, an area between the anus and the scrotum, is full of arteries and nerves vital to sexual function. So if anybody bikes for long hours each week, get a seat that are available now, designed to protect that area, especially younger people. If you're going to do this and you're going to ride for long years and long periods of time, just get a seat that is protective. 
Erectile dysfunction is a sign of heart disease. In most cases, erectile dysfunction can be a warning sign of heart disease. One study even suggests that it can predict heart attack, stroke, and even death from cardiovascular disease. So how are erectile dysfunction and heart problems related? You see, Erectile dysfunction is an early barometer of poor vascular function. This is a warning sign. This is a time to intervene and prevent heart attacks and cardiovascular disease. Again, we come back to the same thing. Every blood vessel in your body, your arteries have the inner lining that is endothelium. This endothelium produces nitric oxide, which dilates the blood vessels and keeps the blood flowing smoothly. So if you have a problem of an endothelium dysfunction in a penile artery, that means erectile dysfunction is equal to endothelium dysfunction. ED is equal to ED. How strong is the connection to heart problems? Research suggests, uh, hear me, properly on this, that men with erectile dysfunction who have no causes, obvious causes, like trauma, surgery, or cancer where they had to have surgery, and they rule out psychological causes, then what have you got left? All these blood pressure, diabetes, and hype, this is it. We have no symptoms of heart problems should be screened for heart disease. Complications, unsatisfactory sex life, stress or anxiety, embarrassment or low self-esteem, relationship problems, and inability to get your partner pregnant. So let's go back. How was the blue pill discovered? Scientists in UK, the scientists from the Pfizer company, pharmaceutical company, discovered the powers of Viagra, the first, very first drug, by accident. Do you know what, what really happened? See, they had a trial. They had a trial of finding out an anti-anginal drug, a drug that could help in the chest pain in people who had angina. And that drug was called UK92480. But what happened was it did very little for the anginal pain. But there was something else going on. There was a very pleasant side effect. And that pleasant side effect was dilating the coronary blood vessels as hope. Did not dilate the coronary blood vessels as hope, but the blood vessel of the penises become dilated instead. So what happened? There were women and men in this trial. There was a long line of men the next day. They called their brothers, their cousins, and everybody to join into this line because they are having this erectile uh, function. So this is, by mistake, this has come out, but it made Pfizer billions of dollars. My experiences at that time, I was in my clinic in 1990s. I have been... Uh, I have been a speaker for Pfizer on the drug Viagra. And I can tell you, it's kind of humorous, but I can tell you that I had one day a lady call me in the office. And, and uh, I believe I said, okay, I'll call her back. And my officer, office manager came running into my office and said, no, she says it's extremely important. So I took the phone and I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I'm sending my husband right now. See that you give him the blue pill or I'm not going to let him come into the house. So, you know, you, you have things like this at that moment that is going on. And these were the experiences that I had at the time when I was then prescribing uh, this medication. Uh, it does not... You cannot, because one of the gentlemen came around and said, I took the blue pill, but nothing happened. Obviously, because it is not an arousal pill. It is the erectogenic pill. So you have to have the foreplay if you want this pill to work. But 
What is more important than the blue? This is when I turn into a plant-based vegan. I realized that it is the diet that is can do everything what the blue pill can do. But try to lose weight, stop your smoking, exercise, strep, stress, reduce it by meditation, yoga, sky breathing, sleep nine, seven to nine hours and avoid abusive substances. Two studies over here, observational studies, by the way. One was in Harvard study, observational 10 years study of dietary habits and sexual function of 25,000 male students was done taking into account smoking and high blood pressure. And what did they find? It was found that 36% of these students had elect, uh, erectile dysfunction. Now, important thing is that subjects who ate the blueberries, apples, pears, citrus fruits, had a considerable reduction in their erectile dysfunction. So this is something what was done in a Harvard's observational study. And then if you had, anybody has watched the movie Game Changers, in that, they show you three college athletes who are put, they put a rubber band on their penis to see how much of erection and how often they get the erection. Then they gave them a meat taco for the first night. And then second night, they gave them a, a bean taco. When they give the bean taco, the 500% increase in the stiffness. And also, the amount of erections were much more than with a meat taco. So such are the wonders. So why are we not going towards this to improve not only our heart life, but even our sex life? I go next. How does nitric oxide work? See, endothelial cells, the inner lining of the blood vessels produce nitric oxide, produces cyclic GMP. This causes a blood rushing in, swells the penis, expands the penis, and causes stiffness of the penis. The erecto, the ED drugs also work by increasing nitric oxide and cyclic GMP. The erectogenic drugs do that, but so do amino acids like citrulline and arginine. These two amino acids, which are found in pine nuts, walnuts, walnuts, pistachios, Brazilian nuts, and watermelon, and onions and garlic. Now, you know the Valentine's Day is around the corner. Please do not go out for a date after having onions and garlic. That's number one. Number two is dietary nitrates can also increase nitric oxide. And what are these dietary nitrates? Arugula, spinach, bok choy, kale, and beets are the top sources. If you add the blueberries and the raspberries and the pomegranates and grapes, you have a dynamite, dynamite erotic ocean. This is a fact. So let's go to the next one. So here you have beautiful, if you see, here, the arugula, the kale, the spinach, the nuts, the Brazilian nuts, and other nuts, and your blueberries and raspberry. Powerful erectogenic plant food. So in summary, no, we, we, sorry, I forgot. Female sexual dysfunction. You see, I know that people would ask me this, but see, for women, it is a multifactorial issue. You see, you, you need to have uh, a relationship, emotional issues. Where do you take uh, the person, your spouse, for a dinner? How kind you are to her? Or how well you talk to her? All these are multifactorial for women. But for most men, what is it? Just a single thing. And that is why it is very difficult to find any treatment in terms of medicines for this. But 
if you go on to a fruits and diet that we talked about, that I just talked about, it can help women with the blood flow too. Now, there are some studies which have been done. One drug, which is your Viagra again, may prove beneficial for some women who have sexual dysfunction as a result of taking uh, your antidepressants like SSRIs. But why going for that? And if you do this, your things are going to improve tremendously. So in summary, I would like to state that patients who have coronary artery disease, the most common form of heart disease, are most likely to have erectile dysfunction and having an erectile dysfunction can be a warning sign of an impending heart disease. Now facts, I have seen, now these are, the second point I'm making is a fact. Most of my patients after a heart disease, whether they have got uh, stents or bypass surgery or on medical treatment, but if they change into whole food, plant-based, no oil diet, they reported to me that their sex life has improved a zillion times. So what are the differences? Why would you use an erectogenic drugs and not a whole food plant-based diet that we talked about? Because in a, the blue pill or the erectogenic drugs, there are 14 of them now, will have certain side effects. Headache, backache, congestion of the sinuses, uh, bloodshot eyes, blurring of the vision. These are temporary, but still you have these. Then you have a warning sign, you can't take it with nitrates. Then you have the priapism that uh, erection can continue for uh, four hours and you have to run to the emergency room. And the cost. When Viagra came out first, it was $60 a pill. Now it is generic. generic. So if you look at all these, then I would suggest to all my patients, my friends, that if you have a problem of this sort, resort to what we have just discussed. Give it a shot, because I think I missed one slide over here, and that was a low testosterone. Testosterone is important because testosterone increases the arousal factor. Now, even in testosterone, the traditional diet with plenty of meat versus plant-based diet, what was the observational studies between men from different dietary groups showed that a plant-based vegan diet had a small but significant increases in testosterone concentrations in comparison with meat eaters. Now, symptoms of low testosterone are the lean muscle mass goes low, you are depressed, you are irritable, you are fatigued, and you have low sex drive and erectile dysfunction. Before embarking, if your doctor tells you your testosterone is low, I'll put you on testosterone shots. Try this out. Try the whole food plant-based oil diet and see if your testosterone levels improve. Because for some, there is a risk of heart disease and stroke for men who are using testosterone products. So all these foods we talk about, and it has been observational study, but it has increased significantly. So we should go with that. And that should, my dear chef AJ, would end my talk. Oh boy, thank you. This was fabulous. You know, is it completely reversible erectile dysfunction? Erectile dysfunction, if it is caused by your cholesterol, your blood, your blood flow because of cholesterol, hyper blood pressure, bad diet, and your endothelial dysfunction is that, yes, it is completely reversible. But yeah. if it is due to nerve problems and surgery, then it depends on the expertise of the people who are doing the procedures. 
Right. Well, when a man has it, who does he usually see? Does he go to his primary first, his urologist? Because I'm guessing he's not going to his cardiologist first. He goes to his spouse first. (laughs) 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 Truly, truly, I, I believe that he comes to the primary care doctor. But that is not the things which I, in 40 years of practice, have noticed. They don't come and tell me that I have a problem. They'll come around and tell me, Doc, I got a headache. I've got some cold. And and then you have to ask open-ended questions to get the thing out from them. So if if the cholesterol is high, the blood pressure is high, and then you have, if the person is diabetic, it's okay to ask. I mean, how's your sex life? So that is the time they open out. And then you can talk to them about the plant base. And if they want to even, if say they want the medication and your hands are tight, you can do that, but then you can warn them all the side effects and warning signs instead of going online and getting it. Wow. So Randy's asking where you're located and do you see patients or are you retired? I am never going to retire. Uh, so I am always available to people that need me. I told you on both my previous sessions that if they can't get hold of their doctor, the primary care doctor, text me. Go on to my akiltaha.com and put on this thing and I will be able to get your message and talk to you, but I am not your primary care doctor. I have telemedicine with my own patients in my own clinic, but I won't be. I will be giving you my expertise on a subject. But I have a lot of these questions and I'm trying to sort of become a telemedicine in general so that I can help people, but I'm finding ways how to do it because I've just retired, uh, semi-retired. You're going to be 75 next month, right? So you, you, your birthday too, next month. Well, my March 22nd. I know you're in Aries. I don't remember your exact birthday, but I know it's going to be. You are 22nd, I'm 27. We are both Aries. All right. That's why we're so passionate. Fantastic. That is wonderful. Here's a question from Angela, who's watching live. She says, how do I explain to someone that it's also too much eggs and chicken that directly affect this problem? They seem to fly under the radar. Yeah, the chicken and uh, this thing, eggs, like I think some one of the pre- uh, uh, places I read that uh, some people say, look, I'm not having any beef. I only have chicken. And that means that you are having a cigarette with filter. If you are having, uh, you having chicken, if you are having beef, you are having a cigarette without filter. That's what I can say about chicken and eggs. But chicken and eggs are foods that can damage your endothelial lining, the inner lining of your penile arteries. Once that endothelial lining is disrupted, you don't get the nitric oxide, you do not get the GMP, and you have impotency or erectile dysfunction. It is a meat products. So whether it is eggs or whether it is chicken or whether it is beef or whether it is dairy, it is going to harm your endothelial uh, lightning. Great. Thank you. And here's a question from, da, 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 uh, looks like lining. Does atypical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy affect erectile dysfunction? Yes, it does. Overall, because of the, when you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it is not your coronary arteries or your penile arteries, but it is your left ventricular function and overall your heart enlarges. But I think in situations like this, people get more of a psychological impotency, erectile dysfunction, get depressed, and they are scared. And obviously, because it's not something that you can uh, say it's like high blood pressure. No, it, it is a medical uh, problem. So I think it is more on the ways of, uh, on the lines of how you take that cardiomyopathy, what is the degree of cardiomyopathy, 
all that is to be taken into consideration. But basically what I find that if your nerves, impulses of your nerves and blood vessels are impaired, then like the bike riding or other things or surgery or what have you, or but the most likely causes are the foods and the alcohol and the drugs. Yeah, well, she, she mentioned that um, her husband doesn't have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, but was a former smoker for 20 years. But given chance, if that person or husband is going to be on a whole food plant-based diet, no oil diet, then I'm quite sure that it will improve. Thank you. Dave has a question. How dangerous are the over-the-counter and herbal options for erectile dysfunction? See, I believe in the saying that if it does not do any good, but does not harm, it is okay to have it. The drugs that are being now sold are absolutely, I don't know, because there are so many things mixed with it that we are not too sure about what is being sold online. And uh, to me, uh, all these other drugs like Spanish fly and this and that don't really work. It is maybe working psychologically for some people, but I don't think you should go on to, uh, just repeat that question again, please. Yeah, um, how dangerous are over-the-counter and herbal remedies for erectile dysfunction? Uh Herbal remedies, maybe. For example, if you're talking about herbs like say, spices, uh, like your garlic or your, which are helpful, in fact, ginger or uh, uh, turmeric and all that, that's okay. But others, I don't know what they use. And I am not an expert on that. But I would be very wary about using things which I do not understand. Yeah. That's good advice. Um, what is the information that we can get so we can connect with you, asks a live viewer. Well, uh, uh, buy the bundle, buy the book, and go on to my site, akilteher.com, and leave a little message over there, and I will get back to you. But my book is important because it is now in audio. Uh, and uh, to I don't know if people are listening today or viewers do not like my voice. Don't go and buy that book. Oh, buy we the love your voice. It's it's I love it. So I'm going to get it. I have an audible credit, as a matter of fact, and I was wondering what I was going to do with it. Yes, please, please do that because at least here are the first first four minutes that I've talked about, and then decide you know what you want to do. It, is, it took me about two long months to do the audio. Wow. Because I had to use the right uh, uh, pronunciations, all that. So that had took me a little time. Because, you know, we Indians have a pronunciation that is sometimes difficult for people to understand. Well, yeah, I think you have a very wonderful voice. Here's a question from a viewer. What do you consider too much cycling? An hour, two, four, how many times per week? If you are doing about two to four hours a week, long distance, you know, or about say two or two or three times uh, a week and longer distance, like say 20 miles, 25 miles, then I should worry about it. And uh, if you are, and you do get, if you go to a nice a store, a bike store, they will fit you in, which is, uh, it may be a, like a donut type of a thing. I'm not too sure about it, but they can fit you onto those. So that will be fine. I have done, but I've done long distance, but uh, twice I've done 100 miles and 100 kilometers, but now I don't. So I do about five, 10 miles and I do rarely. Right now it's too cold for me to go anyway. So, but uh, yeah, if you do that, then please uh, check on it. You may not know, but uh, eventually you may have a problem, you know, and some people never have a problem. 
but it does the dental nerves which are there between the anus and the scrotum do get pressed yeah okay let's see if there's another question oh here's one about the endothelial from angela if someone requests standard blood work done to see how things are looking is there a way to see how your endothelial is functioning no but you know uh a corollary to that question, I can answer that in a different way. On the new horizons, they've come across a CCTA. Uh, uh, it's a corollary, uh, the angiogram, and um, uh, uh, so that CCTA uh, does have what is called a small thing uh, clearly, which is C L E E R L Y. This clearly looks into the CCTA and finds out the plaque which is formed. Because nobody, a lot of my patients who got heart disease, younger patients will say, Doc, but I don't know if my plaque is hard or soft. The soft plaque can cause heart attacks. A hard plaque will never cause a heart attack because it will go on. So this actually measures how much of plaque you have and how, uh, whether it is soft or it is hard. It is computerized coronary angiogram that is done, you know. Yep, thank you. A lot of people are saying they think your voice is calming and the bike questioner said a half hour on a Peloton. You know what I do? I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I stand on my bike the whole time, but I'm, I'm spinning, I'm not riding outside. One more thing is, that the new on the horizon, which is a nice thing if people just want to know about it, it's outside the realm of our talk. But I can tell you one thing, that they have come across now on the horizon that you can have uh, stands put in, which are soluble. So after a while, before and when gives enough chance for lifestyle medicine, lifestyle medicine and lifestyle choices to take over and then the stands dissolve. So that's a new thing. There are another new thing that has come out is lithotripsy. Yeah, they have the lithotripsy of kidney stones. Now they're doing it for plaques. This I believe is wrong. I believe it's wrong. I'm not saying other. I believe it is wrong because a heart plaque is not going to break. So there is no need to do lithotripsy in that. Interesting. Um, they're asking, what about fish? Does that harm the endothelial as well? Yes, ma'am. As, as I said, fish, chicken, which people take are just, you're smoking, but you're smoking with a filter. So whatever you do, fish, fish is omega-3, omega-6, you can get into flaxseed. I mean, people do it, and I understand the Mediterranean diet is also proven to uh, help in heart disease, but not completely like the whole food plant-based diet. And reversal is only with this diet. You know, that's a good point that, 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 that they haven't shown heart disease reversal with any other diet, have they? No, no. The Mediterranean diet can pro protect you and help you and you feel that is fine. But reversal, no. I mean, Dr. Dean Ornish has just brought out that a severe cardiomyopathy patient with a large and large heart, they could not even do a heart transplant. When he was put on a whole food plant-based no oil diet, he started improving. The only thing is give it time. Let your taste buds enjoy this and you will never want to put anything in your... I am telling you at times... By mistake or something, I do get some meat wherever I am or whatever. I don't know that it is in there. Immediately, my stomach will tell me the next day, you have done something wrong. Yeah. So wow. I'm having, a, having a, this thing where only two of us are alive now, my brother and I. Rest of them are all died. My sister died at 59. My mother died at 59. My brother died at 52. Come on. It's epigenetics. I'm trying to live. I don't know whether it's longevity. I don't mind if I have to go tomorrow, but I have lived my life for the last 12 years. I wish it started earlier, but 
age is not a limiting factor in changing one's lifestyle. I love that. Age is not a limiting factor. Well, you're proof positive. Thank you so much, Dr. And thank you so much for being in the bundle. Did you have a chance to look at it and notice anybody else's wonderful contributions in addition to your own? Oh, yes, yes. I've seen a lot of it, you know, about people who have shown for uh, exercise of the diets, the recipes. Oh, it is amazing. I mean, this thing, you said $600. I don't think you can get oh, this. 6, Over 6000 not 600 It's if you if you price it separately, it's it's almost 6000 6, Sorry, I made a mistake, 6000 But I don't think you can get it because the whole idea is that all this in one place, no way. It's when you have the presentation, you're the PBNSG, you have people, doctors like me and doctors like T. Collins and all that. It's amazing. And once it's gone, it's gone. They have till 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, and then it's gone forever. Here's one more question. Um, what are your favorite snacks that you can take in a backpack for hiking? You know, I... I, I like that, uh, what is it called? Leaf. Uh, oh, leaf, leaf, leaf cuisine. Not lean cuisine, leaf, leaf. cuisine. Right? Leaf, L E A F, yeah. Yeah, that is something that I always keep in my house. I don't use it. I make my own things, whatever I want. But if I'm going backpacking or if I'm going on a trip somewhere, I will always carry a few packets in my baggage. The reason is that they all you have to do is take it out and pour boiling water and it does great. In my backpack, of course, if you're talking about getting your potassium, getting your nutrition, you have the dates and your seeds and your raisins to go along with it. And carry these little packs. All you have to get is some hot water and enjoy it. If you, it depends on where you're backpacking. You know, If you're going on a Mount Kilimanjaro, that's different. If you're going for a four or five uh, hours hike, this should suffice. Absolutely. Great. Let me see if there's any more questions before we set up for the next show. I think that's it. So thank you so much. This was wonderful. I wish you a very happy birthday in just a few weeks. Are you doing anything special for your 75th birthday? I will be in, uh, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I'll be in Turkey. But the way things are going on over there, I don't feel like going, even though it is open, because I don't feel like enjoying in a place where others are suffering. Mm. But I don't know, because it all depends on my insurance. I have it booked. My wife and I and a few other friends are going to be there on the 27th of March. Oh, how and nice. I wish you the best of birthday and the best one you ever had so far. Thank you. One more quick question. Do you know what your body fat is, old Pueblo vegan would like to know? I don't know what mine is. <laughs> I don't really know my body fat, but I can tell you my BMI. My BMI is 19. Hey, that's about mine too. We're birthday twins and BMI twins. <laughs> yeah, about 80s. Very so... Take any nonsense from anybody. Absolutely, no. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you. It was such a great uh, talk and it's wonderful catching up with you again. And if you do go have a very safe trip. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in 10 minutes for Vegan Talk Talk with Dr. Scott Harrington. He's going to be talking about personality 